This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. I used Squarespace to build both Basics with Babish and BingingWithBabish.com. On the sites, you'll find recipes, equipment lists, other news, and updates. All beautifully designed, if I do say so myself. Get 10% off your first Squarespace order by visiting Squarespace.com slash Babish. Hello there, welcome back to another episode of Arcade with Alvin. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Japanese fruit cream sandwiches from Animal Crossing. Now these sandwiches are a simple yet pleasurable delight. They're made of three things, soft, fluffy, sweet milk bread, a generous helping of light but airy whipped cream, and nice large servings of fresh fruit. Now it might sound weird to have a fruit sandwich, but these were found everywhere in Japan when I've been lucky enough to go, and I will say were probably one of my favorite things that I found in the 7-Elevens and convenience stores all around the country. Just to give these fruit a little bit of touching up, we're going to take the strawberries and just simply slice the tops off. For the tangerines and oranges, we're going to peel them, but also we're going to try to take those little membranes that go along the outside of each slice, just so that it looks a little bit cleaner. All right. Now the fruit can go hang out for a bit while we work on our components. First, making milk bread from scratch. And one of the keys to that is a tangjong or a milk-based roux. So in a medium saucepan over medium heat, we're combining 75 grams of bread flour with 135 grams of whole milk. Stirring and heating this until this becomes a sticky paste that leaves a thin film of residue. Once it's become a nice sticky ball and that no longer has any huge lumps, we're gonna take this out and continue with the rest of the recipe. In a large mixing bowl, we have 720 grams of bread flour, 7.5 grams of yeast, 45 grams of sugar, and 7.5 grams of salt. After our dry ingredients are mixed together, we're going to take that chilled tangjong from earlier, tear it up into little chunks, and throw that in and give that a mix before we add in the rest of our liquid ingredients, which starts with 90 grams of heavy cream, 405 grams of whole milk, and 60 grams of honey. This goes for another 5 to 10 minutes until the dough is sticky, shiny, and no longer has any lumps. Okay, now we're going whoa 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 and then we are going to remove this dough and put this into a oiled bowl to let proof for about one hour until it has doubled in size once this dough baby has doubled we're going to take this back out invert this back onto our work surface punch it down like a baby uh and divide this into roughly four equal sized portions for each of these we're going to flatten it out and sort of tuck the edges in and make a little ball to resemble a nice little mini bread baby. We're going to repeat this process with all four of these. One of the important things here is to make sure that we repeat that tucking and pulling process with the dough ball so the dough stretches and becomes more taut, giving us a smoother and shinier surface for each dough baby. Once this process has been repeated for all four dough balls, we're going to take a loaf pan that has a slideable top remover that is designed specifically for making milk bread, take some softened butter and make sure to lubricate the insides thoroughly and smoothly, and then plop each of these four dough baby balls into the middle so they are back to back. The lid slides back on and this goes to proof for another hour or so until the dough has reached about 80% of its way to the top of the lid. Once the proofing is done we're going to throw this into a 350 degree oven for about one hour. All right on to the whipped cream. Now in my experience this whipped cream is not just ordinary whipped cream it's a bit more stable as these fruit sandwiches have been seen in many 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 convenience stores and still hold up no matter how long they've been in there. So to make stabilized whipped cream, we're simply just adding a step beforehand, making a gelatinized mixture by sprinkling 4 teaspoons of unflavored gelatin onto 1 fourth cup of cold water. Once the gelatin has bloomed or fully absorbed the water, we're going to throw this into a microwave for about 10 seconds just until all of the gelatin is dissolved. Stir to combine and set aside to cool just for a little bit before it goes into our whipped cream. Now, in the bowl of a stand mixer, we're going to throw in 3 cups of heavy whipping cream with 3 tablespoons of sugar and just make that into until it hits soft peaks. Once the peaks are nice and soft, but not too stiff, we're gonna throw in our cool gelatin mixture and just continue mixing for just another about 10 seconds until it's combined. Our stabilized whipped cream is now done, which means it's gonna hold for a lot longer than normal whipped cream. This one's a little bit more stiffer and returns to the fridge to set for a little bit, and now, this is the return of our dough baby. Baked, 
inverted onto a wire rack, and cooled until it is now room temperature. Here's a look at all those sections because we had four dough baby balls in there. And for these sandwiches, it's best when the crusts are off. So first, I'm going to slice these into half inch slices and then stack them up and slice off the crusts one stack at a time. How satisfying is that? And since we have all three of our components for the fruit sandwich ready, I think it's time to assemble. I thought that doing this over a nice surface of saran wrap would be cleaner, so we place down one slice of our bread, a good portion of our cream, and use a spatula or a knife to kind of spread this outwards, leaving a little lump in the middle, because that is the bed of whipped cream that is going to hold our fruit in, like this strawberry here. We're going to place them going diagonally, and also make sure to cover the other corners with the equal altitude of the same fruit. Then we are going to assemble a new one, the same pattern with the cream and the lump in the middle, but this one with some different fruit. The beauty of these sandwiches is in their cross sections, so we must line up the fruit accordingly along the diagonal of the bread. A lot of thinking and planning to do here to imagine how a knife would go through this sandwich. Once the fruit has been assembled on the first layer, we're going to go ahead and take our whipped cream that has been stabilized and pipe this over the top, trying to fill in any of those gaps so that when we squish it down with a piece of bread, we can hopefully not have any giant air pockets. Might have over whipped the cream a little bit too much, so it's a little thick, but hey, I think it'll do. One crustless slice of milk bread goes on top to squish, and then we wrap these in saran wrap twice one lengthwise and one widthwise, that it is tightly enveloped and has time to sit. I like to make sure that since we know which way we set the fruit, we also mark that with a sharpie so that we can cut it the same direction after we wrap it. These wrapped up sandwiches go into the fridge to rest for at least one hour, but ideally overnight because the bread needs to hydrate from the cream and the fruit and all the flavors could absorb together a little bit better. Otherwise, we're just going to be eating bread, fruit, and cream separately. Since we wanted to eat these the same day, we went ahead and gave these two hours hours to rest in the fridge, which honestly was just the beginning. I think we could have definitely done a full day, but we were impatient like little babies. So we took them out and made sure to take a long, nice serrated knife and cut along those diagonals that we marked earlier. The beauty of these sandwiches is in the cross section, but also they never talk about how hard it is to get it out of the saran wrap. A little bit tricky here, but whoa, look at these cross sections. I think this is sort of the pride and joy of any place that makes or sells fruit sandwiches. I remember walking around in Japan and seeing stores that specialize in selling only fruit sandwiches and the cross sections and the fruit they had on display was quite beautiful to say the least and they were just so fluffy and so plump and so filled with stuff that I wanted to try and emulate the same now ours doesn't look the same as the ones you would get done by a professional fruit cream sandwich maker but I will say those cross sections are looking pretty good and now I present to you our version of the fruit cream sandwich from Animal Crossing all laid out with different fruits and flavors all right Right. There's only one thing left to do, and that is to dig in. I'm going to go for a traditional, just straight up strawberry and cream sandwich. The bread still is a little chewy, as a normal loaf of bread is, but the fruit and cream go together so well with the bread. It doesn't have that same airy fluffiness and sweetness that the ones in Japan do, but hey, it got pretty close. And the point is, I still want to eat this whole thing. So that's all that matters, isn't it? How about we let the gang choose which one they have? And I will say in the span of five minutes, all of these sandwiches were gone. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. They've been a great partner in supporting the Babish Culinary Universe and bringing my websites to life. From websites to online stores to domains and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for you to build your online presence. They also have SEO tools so that your site is getting found and searched by more people more often. If you want to try it for yourself, you can start your free trial today by visiting squarespace.com babish to get 10% off your first purchase.